Hi guys, this is the first official episode of my podcast. If you did not watch the introduction, I advise you to do so, just so you know what I will be talking about. In this first episode, I will piece together the land of Pontus. During the flourishing years of the kingdom of Pontus, from the early 3rd century BC into the Roman period, not including the expansionism of Mithridates the Great, Its kings and queens ruled a district of land about 450 miles along the Black Sea coast, from Heraclea Pontica and Amistris in the west, all the way to Trapezos, though Trapezos was not owned by Pontus yet. The land of Pontus is defined by a narrow coastal strip and precipice mountains in, in the interior, whose summits become higher from west to east. In the west are the ridge of Mount Algasis, beginning in Paphlagonia and extending for about 80 miles into Pontus. East of this range, the summits lower for nearly 200 miles in an area of deep river valleys that form the heartland of Pontus. Further east are the Paradress. The Paradress are not so much a mountain range, but the beginning of a high plateau of Eastern Asia Minor and Armenia. Despite their ruggedness, these mountains are cut by a number of large rivers. First, the Hales, which flows in a great arch from a source south of the Peradres, passing through Cappadocia, and then heading north in western Pontus, reaching the Black Sea after 840 miles. A very important feature of the geography of Pontus is the amount of small streams and rivers, one of which is the Iris. It flows west, northwest, and then enters a series of canyons, passing first the great temple city of Kamana, and then the Pontic metropolis of Amicia, eventually reaching the Black Sea after 260 miles, just 35 miles southeast of the mouth of the Hales. The Iris has two important tributaries, the Lycos, which flows north of and parallel to the Upper Iris, past the site of Kabira. The other tributary is the Skylax, which comes from the southwest and joins the Iris just above Amicia. Further west is the Amnias, which breaks off from the Hales River. And the last one is the Temodon River, that is northeast of Amicia. Now I am gonna move on to the towns of Pontus. The oldest cities in Pontus were on the coast of the Black Sea. Sinope was probably founded first. Its fine location gave it extremely early prominence. The city controlled an extensive trading network. Strabo, in his own words, calls Sinope the finest city, meaning within the Black Sea area. Sinope also minted minted its own coins for a small period until it was taken and controlled by Pontus. About 80 miles along the coast to the southeast was another important city, Amisis, whose early history is really obscure. It's also obscure when it com- become, became owned by Pontus. However, we know that Mithridates II did control it. Another 100 miles east was Pharnakia which we all know was founded, obviously, by Pharnacus I. At the west end of Pontus was the final city on the Black Sea, and that was Amistris, founded by none other than Amistris. <laughs> Despite all of these rich coastal cities, Pontus's origins were inland. The earliest location of Pontus was Kimayata, perhaps in the all The site was a refuge for Mithridates I, right before he founded the kingdom of Pontus. The most important town in Pontus was Amatia, because it's home of Strabo. It was also built by Mithridates I, and it was extremely defensible. Strabo tells us that the city of Amatia was a city as well as a fortress. That is also the same spot where the Pontic kings were buried. So now you know why it's really important. 
Now I am going to move on to the temples of Pontus. Kabira is first, about 60 miles east of Amatia, was a royal estate at least from the time of Mithridates VI, which its importance was because of its proximity to an ancient shrine of men, the local moon god, which lay just to the southeast of Amaria. The moon god was important due to the fact that the Pontic kings swore their oaths in his name. None of the temple states were more famous than Kamana. Kamana. On the right bank of the Iris, about 50 miles upstream from Emesia, and 25 miles southwest over the divide from Kabira. Kamana was dedicated to the goddess of war, Ma. The cult, as it was called, became a religious establishment in the early history of Pontus, and the priests who, were, who wore a royal diadem were second only to the king. Kamana was especially known for its Armenian markets, making it very important too. There was another shrine at Zela, about 30 miles west of Kamana. It was dedicated to the Persian deities Anayatis, Amanos, and Anadat. Now that we know what Pontus looked like, we can get into the first founder. However, that will have to wait till the next episode. Be sure to follow my Instagram at LoneBerserkerYT, and if you, and if you would like, subscribe to my YouTube channel which is Lone Berserker. Thank you all for watching. This is the Rise of the East podcast.